Hello and welcome back to this channel Comic Books. Today, we will be doing a recap of a Marvel visual novel called Thor God of Thunder God of Butcher. Chapter 1 The story opens in 893 AD. In Iceland, Thor tells us that the forest giants were terrorizing the inhabitants for weeks. The frost giant had already eaten three goats, four dogs, and two children. The mother of the child prayed for help from the gods and they received it. Thor came there and he led a group of twenty men. They tracked the frost giant back to its den in the highlands. They battled for hours, and the frost giant kept on attacking them with trees and boulders. Many Vikings lost their lives and they went to Valhalla. It kept on going till Thor's axe finally slashed the giant guts, and then they beheaded the giant. Thor says that this all happened four days ago, and in the last four days he has been living in this village. He has already eaten more goats than the frost giant, and he had drunk enough meat in these four days that it would be enough to drown several sailors, and he had made love with more than half of the women of this village. The Thor introduces himself and says that his name is Thor Odinson. He is the god of thunder, prince of Asgard, and the heir to the throne of the realm of Eternals. He loves his life. But soon they hear a cry of a young girl, and Thor thinks in his mind that he hopes that it was another frost giant. The young girl comes running towards Thor and says that there was a devil man in the water, and she saw its face. As Thor and his men run towards the lake, an old woman says to them that the girl was telling the truth. There is someone in the lake or whatever is left of that person. She tells Thor that red chunks have been washing up on the shore for hours. As Thor and his men see the body, one of Thor's men says that this poor guy must have fallen off the ship when he was sailing and he may have hit some rocks. Then he asks the others to confirm if this man was from Thir village or not. Another guy looks at the dead boy and says that he is not from this village. The old woman asks Thor what he sees in the eyes of this dead man. Thor looks towards the dead body and says that he was a god. His men in shock ask him what kind of creature can do this to a god. One of them says that it must be a sea serpent but another one say that the body had no marks of a bite. Rather it looks like he was butchered. Another guy says that what in the nine realms can butcher a god. Thor boasts and says that whatever it may be, he can guarantee that thing's skill is no match for Asgardian steel. He then says to everyone that there was no point in standing there and tells everyone to go back and enjoy. He tells a boy to go and fetch some wood. He tells him to bring enough wood so that they can build a funeral pyre. The old woman asks Thor that did he ever saw anything like this before. Thor says that he has seen many wars in heaven. He has seen many gods bleed and suffer and he has seen many immortals getting tortured by their son. But he never saw anything like the fear that he can see in this dead god's eyes. After hearing this the woman starts to pray and Thor asks her what god she prays to. The woman answers by saying all of them. Then, in the present day, a little girl on the planet Indigar prays to Thor for rain on her barren world. Thor appears and conjures a great rainstorm and breaks the ground, revealing underground water currents. Thor is invited to feast with the little girl's people and tells them stories of the wonders of Asgard. After the festivities, Thor asks one of the elders why the little girl did not pray to their gods. The elder informs Thor that Indigar does not have any gods. When Thor questions this, the elder tells him that there are old stories about gods from long ago who lived in the sky but that no one believes those stories anymore. Thor goes to investigate and finds a palace in the sky. He searches the many rooms but finds no sign of life. After entering a room with a chained door, he finds the corpses of all the gods of Indigar. He notes that since Godelfesh rots slowly, they've been dead for hundreds of years and whoever did this took great pleasure in the act. Thor is attacked by a lizard-like creature and suddenly realizes that the killer of these gods is Gore the God Butcher, someone he faced over 1,000 years ago in Iceland. Many millennia from the present, a broken down, old Thor with one eye and one arm sits on the throne of an empty Asgard. Thor curses the silence of the empty Asgard and resolves that if he is to die, he will die in battle. He calls for someone to bring him his arm, before remembering that there is no one to do so. Armed with Mjolnir and the Odin Sword, Thor leaps into a horde of lizard-like creatures and bows the death of Gore the God Butcher. Chapter 2 In the year 893 AD, inside the Great Weapons Hall of Asgard, Thor attempts to lift Mjolnir but is unable to do so. Hefting his axe, Jarn Jorn vows to one day make the hammer his and set sail on a longship into the Baltic Sea alongside a crew of Norse warriors. As fog closes in, the Vikings grow uncertain, but Thor boasts of his superior senses, not noticing a shadowy figure watching from the mists standing on the surface of the water. One of the Vikings spots it and is terrified, but by the time Thor turns around the figure has vanished. Recalling the dead Native American god, Thor suppresses his concerns and tells the Vikings to shut up and keep rowing. However, Thor cautions the captain to row slower until the fog passes. Emerging from the mist, a pale-skinned figure, naked save for a cloak of living darkness secretly follows, eager to hunt Thor and his kin. 
Three days later, on the banks of the Neva River, Thor and the Vikings face off against a group of Slavic warriors. The Viking chief is eager for battle and plundering, but Thor tells him to stand down as he wants to speak to their gods. Addressing the Slavic warriors, Thor challenges their gods to combat. The Slavs boast soasting of the combat prowess of Perrin the Storm Lord and Chernobog the Black. Another Slav calls out that their gods are coming as a winged horse swoops from the sky. The Slavs are confused by Perrin's divine steed appearing without its rider, Thor giving the Vikings leave to attack while he investigates. Noticing the horse is spattered with blood, he mounts it and flies into the clouds, which are spattered with flecks of divine blood. A second winged horse flies towards him, the headless corpse of Chernobog still astride its back. Annoyed at his fun being ruined, Thor wonders whether the Slavic gods killed each other before dismissing the possibility, disquieted by the sensation that he's being hunted. Watching from the clouds, the black cloak godslayer transforms his right arm into a blade of living darkness, decapitating Perrin's horse in a single strike. As Thor falls, the godslayer, his cloak transformed into wings, plunges after him, declaring that Thor now knows the fear of mortality and will soon learn what it feels like to be butchered. Turning in midair, Thor grabs onto Chernabog's flying horse, knocking the corpse off, and charges towards the godslayer, who mocks his bloodlust. Thor introduces himself to his opponent, who declares his intent to slaughter the entire pantheon. The two clash, Jarn drawn against the godslayer shapeshifting cloak and weapons. Thor recalls an incident in his youth where he learned the difference between war and murder, an Asgardian named Dagger had embarked on a killing spree and been imprisoned. Confused due to Odin having been praised for slaying thousands more, Thor confronted his father. Odin explains that war was very different from what Dagger had done, as even the greatest warriors never relished killing or fully succumbing to bloodlust, as to do so would be to become a monster. Still confused, Thor had gone to see Dagger, expecting him to be feral and bestial, but had fallen into the Mad God's prison. Dagger had not attacked Thor but instead talked about his killing spree with such serenity and predatory darkness that Thor had been terrified for the five hours he'd remained in the pit. Dagger had been executed the following day, dismissed as a mad god, but Thor alone recognized that he was something far worse, seeing the same quality in his present opponent. While Thor manages to wound the godslayer, he is overwhelmed by his opponent's shapeshifting weapon and knocked off the flying horse, which comes to his rescue just as he is about to be killed. Before the winged horse can catch him, the godslayer grabs Thor and flies away with him, mocking his inherent divine arrogance with utter contempt. Thor dismisses his opponent as a butcher of gods, snapping that he's seen his enemies like before. Kicking Thor in the face, the god butcher sneers that he hasn't. As he falls, Thor laments that his prayers to the elder gods to never encounter an individual like Dagger ever again have, like most prayers, gone unheard and unanswered. Impaling Thor, the god butcher asks what he's the god of, boasting that he's killed countless gods of all sorts. On the verge of passing out, Thor replies that he's the god of thunder, a massive bolt of lightning striking the god butcher. In the present, Thor charges Emjolnir with divine lightning, and then smashes the beast of living darkness. Thor contemplates that the monster took hours to kill, and that the god butcher must have grown considerably in power since their last battle. Bidding farewell to the dead gods of Indigar, Thor vows to avenge them no matter how long it takes and sets out to Omnipotent City. And that's all for today guys. Stay tuned to get more new videos. Stay safe and keep watching.